can't help but notice for anyone who works on older vehicles that if, um, well, you seem to have a bunch of free time, that car will take up all your free time. What I'm doing here right now is just a relatively minor repair. It's more of a cosmetic repair. This is the gear shifter cover uh, out of the AMC. Uh, Three-speed automatic transmission, no overdrive. What happened is it actually it started to crack along the bottom here. And what I've done is I've used super glue because it does react with this plastic and it'll fuse it back together. And then I'm just kind of reinforcing the crack along the bottom here um, using a strip of aluminum and JB weld. So that's done. But that is not the only thing that I was planning on working on tonight. No, I had something else that was also on the table to be worked on. And if I can carefully bring it up. For the most part, it's already been dismantled. So, of course, I have to upgrade some of the audio systems in an 80s car, and one of which is being, sure, mini disc in the deck, and a 10 disc CD changer in the back. Now, that's going to be difficult to fully accomplish because I don't want to make this early 80s car look like a mid 90s car. So, this changer here, which is completely dismantled so far, is actually hiding in the back under the carpet, under the trunk. Uh, in fact, the trunk had to be pulled out. The whole like back half of the car had to be removed just so I could get in the space to pre-wire and rough this in. But I want to do a little bit of preventative maintenance before we go any further, mainly because we do have capacitor issues all over this board and the regulator board, which sits over here. And how do I know I had a problem there? Well, the biggest issue was whenever it was warm outside and whenever the inside of the car was hot, the CD player would malfunction and it would cause the deck to malfunction. If it was cool outside, um, no problem. It would load discs, it would play discs, like you could get it up to working temperature and it would run no problem for hours. Um, but yeah, you gave it heat and it would just start to malfunction almost immediately. Same goes with this is a, um, a shock absorbing unit. There's actually little rubber mounts that go here and here and same on the other side as well. And I guess the ground uh, between the boards on the um, shock absorb system and the rest of the vehicle isn't all that great. I think your only connection really is this ribbon cable over here. And what happened was that if I didn't give this thing an amazing ground, uh, it, it, it didn't want to work. Again, it just kind of malfunctioned and stopped working. And it was really like abrupt. Like I could clamp uh, a ground cable directly onto this thing and it would work fine. You take that ground clamp off in seconds, it would just, it would just start losing its mind completely. You put the ground clamp back on, went right back. Anyways, what am I talking about here? We're going to be doing some recapping in here as preventative maintenance because once this is installed and everything's reassembled it is not going to be an easy job to remove this to figure out what went wrong or to just replace it entirely so we have two boards we're going to deal with the digital board here last but first off we're going to deal with the uh, regulator board so let me move a couple of these things out of the way and I'm talking about inside the enclosure here. There we go. Now, this is the interface board that goes on the outside of the CD player. So you have your audio left and right, and you have your bus interface because it's a Sony device. Um, there's no caps on this at all. There is like one small component, but other than that, it's a completely passive. So we don't have to deal with that. This is the board I was talking about that does a bunch of regulation. So all of these caps here, these um, miniature radials, these aren't surface mount. They still have holes on the other side to go to. They're three ho through hole. These all need to be replaced. Same with this one. So I've already gone over these ones here with the capacitor wizard. And I understand some people have uh, do's and don'ts about ESR meters, but I've simply found that if you have a capacitor that is rated for 85 degrees 
and it's been in a vehicle since mm, the late 90s, early 2000s, it is now past its um, usable life. So change them out. Oh, and by the way, as I take this out here, this is the ground strap that I added, and it just simply goes from the chassis here, um, which has its own ground point, um, to the actual supporting um, stabilized CD player. Um, it's a flexible wire as well, so the idea is that it can bounce around still, and it actually doesn't impact it. Like, it works great. All right. So for this, I went to one of everybody's favorite places for caps. I went to DigiKey, and I ordered most of what I needed. Some of these are within what I was ordering. Some of them I could not find exact replacements. So for example, these are 1016s. These are 1016s, and it's a slightly different size. Can I improve the lighting on that a little bit? Nope, cannot. Okay. So, I guess that's a task for me next, is to improve my bench lighting. So, we are going to be using that beautiful Weller that I was working on a couple videos back. And you can see what it took for me to repair that there in the upper corner. And let's get to work with the 4716s that are scattered all over this board. So, I'm going to turn that on. And I have... There's a wire brushy pad that's living in the stand over here and just over on this side here I have a regular wet sponge so you may see me cycling between them depending on how I clean my tip all right Should have cleaned out my desoldering tool before I got into this. It already smells fishy here, so those caps, or that one at least, was no good. this out of the way so you can actually see what I'm doing or actually better idea can I tilt the camera so you can actually see what I'm doing uh, there we go that's a little bit better I also want to point out as I'm taking these out, these do have a polarizing mark on them. It's that dimple there, which indicates our negative side. And these are all 4716s. They better all be 4716s. Yeah. Hmm. That was another cap that wasn't doing all too awesome. Keep reaching for the wrong iron.
just being careful here to make sure I'm not lifting pads because some of these do look a little hokey. Why are you? Oh, because I'm actually putting on the wrong one. There we go. Alright, so that's a ton of 4716s. Now, where were the 4716s? Oh god, these are way smaller. Do I have. I do. Roll of tape. Because everything likes to roll off of this desk if you let it. And that did not want to roll off the desk. Now, these caps I'm using here are higher temperature rating, so that's fine. But they are not automotive grade, which, well, we'll see how that turns out. Um, the reason why sometimes automotive grade capacitors are recommended is that, sure, it's 12 volts, it's battery power. But when the engine is running, a car can get very very noisy electrically and that's not something you really want so some capacitors don't like the additional spikes and transients and other garbage that most vehicle electronics have to endure um, or just noise suppression in general so that's when you use that this one here supplies power, I think, with um, at least one phase of regulation beforehand when it comes from the stereo receiver. Okay, and I got three extra caps here, and I'll save those for later. I will regret me not labeling these. It'll come back to haunt me one point. C. Uh, a 150. Uh, that's a 1016. No. Uh, no. I know they're hiding in here. Uh, here we go. Uh, one microfarad, 50 volts, and I do believe that was the only one I needed. So. That will just drop into there. And I will visually verify now that I've put the caps in the right direction. Because who here remembers when I had to change out a bunch of tantalums uh, the first time around on an SE30 because I forgot what indication of polarity was. That was embarrassing. Alright. Bring myself up the temperature here. Put that out of the way. Thank you. You need to figure out a modern solution for soldering with that microscope or that pretty much just a camera. It was a an Elmo uh, overhead projector and I was just kind of reading in from the video out, but that's not high definition. I mean, that'll be an interesting one to resolve, especially since, again, um, if no one's ever seen where my workbench is, um, 
where the camera is right now and where my hand is is like 12 inches. It is a tiny, tiny little nook and I'm dealing with like lights all over the place and there's this um, blue snowball that's in the corner here that you're hearing me from. So uh, it's, it's, it's not an ideal workspace, but it's really all I can afford. So just going to have to live with that. And I think I got everything there. Yep, I did. Now we'll just clip the leads. I think it's time for new side snips. Did I just pull that trace up? Okay, no, I didn't. I think I mentioned before, I've tried to put music into these. So, you know, you're not just kind of sitting there on your couch or on the train or wherever, watching me work on this and there's, you know, no music. Okay, I gotta brush that off. But uh, unfortunately, uh, YouTube has other plans when it comes to um, ambient music. Okay, so that is the DC DC board done. I'm gonna have to go over it with a brush, but it is done. Uh, that required a bunch of 4716s and a 150. So those are junk. All right, and now comes the other fun one. I'll put that there, actually. I'll take that out of the way and switch these around. And that was this. So, I've already gone and verified. This is all there is for capacitors on this. Um, just this. Um, these are electrolytics. What's happened is that they're actually, the cans are in these um, little plastic containers which are supported down and basically the caps are laid down sideways um, but they're really weird values like uh, okay they're not really weird values 10 microfarads 16 volts 47 farads 6 volts stuff like that but I found them frustrating so what we're gonna do here is I don't believe they're glued down or, oh, no, they are glued down. <sighs> All right. So I'm not, I haven't really tackled these before. I've tried to ignore them. But just simply because, again, the CD player is going to be in a very pain in the ass spot. I've decided we will do them anyways. So get ready for me being upset because I have no idea how this is going to work. Okay, no, that one fell off. Okay. Well, we're not going to do that 4710s yet. I want to do the 476s first. And one. This one won't release. Can I just kind of poke at it? Now that I know that it's just kind of... Oh, it's a... Ew. Clean your tools when you're done, folks. Okay. This one's got like an adhesive on the far end of it. So I'm just going to see if I can rock this without busting a trace and it doesn't want me to do that <sighs> all right fine 
Okay, is it just the one? Yeah, it's just the one. No, there's... Okay, there's there was the other 4710 here, but that one popped off pretty easily. Oh, got it. Let's just not break the lead. There we go. All right, two down. Three down. Four down. And I think that was it for the 47 sixes. Yes, it was. Okay. I didn't want to turn you off. All right, where were you? You were 150. You know what? I'm going to put you back in the bag. And just throw you off to the side for now. Uh, 47.6.3. Right. I could not get exact replacements. So he went with 6.3. Now remember, in most applications, you can get away with only have with going up on voltage a little bit. But for capacitance, typically don't change it. Okay, so the stripe on these ones here, or that little black dot right there. So that there is our negative. This side is our positive. How do I know this? If I look at all the other caps here, the side without it actually have a plus silk screened onto the board. Even over here, it kind of overlaps this chip, but again, like it's just, it's there. So our negative is going to be... I'm going to have to experiment with this. Where did I put my side snips again? There they are. And we're just going to lay that down like that. Could probably could have gone a little bit shorter on that, but clearance isn't necessarily an issue here. As opposed to say making sure everything's lined up, and that'll make sense in a little bit here. So let's bring our temperature back up, 750 degrees should be enough. We're not using lead-free here, by the way. Cellgen Technologies is proud to announce it does not comply with ROHS for the longevity of its equipment. And, oh, there it is. go. Two down, two to go. And there. That was
That's a little too long. I'm gonna have to shorten that one. There we go. There we go, and one more. And I'm gonna actually throw those over there and flip the unit around. <clears throat> and I believe, sorry, sanity check here. The polarity is all the same on these, right? Yeah, it is, okay. Alright, so the next one on our target here is that 100 microfarad 6 volt, which is right here. And that one I'm almost, I'm, I'm just, it's glued. Oh, and off it went. Okay, 106. Can I actually pull these out and show you, or have they kind of shrunk them? No, that's in there. Yeah, so, like, it is a cap. Like, you can... Well, you can't actually see it. Uh, end of the can is right there. There's the top of the can right there sticking through the plastic. So, a 106 was... 100 microfarad, 6.3 volts. Again, it was kind of a my only option. There we go. And let's tackle that 4710 that's living up there in the corner that we've already gotten loose, I seem to recall. Yep, there it goes. There. So, let's see. 4710, I only ordered one, 
honestly, I, I'm not being paid to do this, so I really am only going to order enough caps for this job because I highly doubt I'm going to be seeing these cap values for a while. And where was I at? There we go. I know I've mentioned this before. If you do not like these soldering videos, please comment about it below and say why you don't like them. I know they're kind of, they, they are time consuming. I think that's kind of what we're going for here. But I'd like actual feedback beyond like a thumbs down on the video. Because that doesn't tell me anything. Okay, and that's the 4710. And now I got a bunch of these little tiny 10 16s, four of those. So, one, two. Three, four, and I think that's my last packet. No, it is not. Because we missed a cap on that other board, didn't we? Oh yeah, we sure did. All right, well, that's going to be pretty straightforward. We'll just do it right after this one here. So four more caps. I rotated that, so let's see if I can... Straighten that, there we go. I can already tell these are not going to be fun to do. All right. One down, three to go. Okay, two more to go.
I was going yes that way. Was I that way? Oh god, I've I've gotten myself out of sequence. That's what I've done. wandered off so I didn't solder that to anything there we go all right and last one on this board which has been a complete pain in the butt right there. You better not wander away on me. Okay, so that is the digital board. Uh, we have now gone and replaced a whole bunch of these weird surface mount um, radial capacitors, electrolytic. Um, not your typical surface mounts, but those are done. And I'm just going to go do and quickly do that 1016. So I'm gonna switch, switch that one out. We're back to this board again. This is going to be pretty straightforward, so I'm going to snip these leads because they're ridiculously long, and I believe polarity is not noted on this one here, so I have to watch which direction that is facing. So before I go any further, I'm going to grab my cap and just get the legs bent in the direction they should be going now. And do you saw the front? And if anyone ever says, like, you really only had to change one capacitor in here again to make it work, no. If you're going to go in on stuff like this, do it once, do it all at the same time. It will save you in the long run. And if this is a customer device, it can actually save uh, nuisance return calls on these. All right. Well, I'm going to have to glue that because it wants to fall down. That cap is flying out of the way here. But there we go. So we are done. I have got both boards completed here. I'm just gonna quickly snap this ribbon cable in. Go. 
And because there's really not much else to do here besides uh, reassemble this whole thing, like this just plugs, this just pretty much sits there. Um, we're done. That's it. So this was a recap of a Sony so, uh, EXCD-2 10 disc CD changer for an automobile. Uh, it was a fairly straightforward job, just about a dozen caps here. And it, I have no questions on if it's going to work or not. It will work, I guarantee you, in this case here. And I hope you enjoyed me watching, uh, or hope you enjoyed me uh, soldering all this and watching me. And if you have any questions, yeah, just leave something down in the comments there. But until next time, have a good one.